An eyeball, covered by a red nose sign, spins into view. White text on a black background reads, Mason in the Dark. A blind man's journey through the wacky world of reading, writing, and other silly bollocks. Brought to you from beyond the black screen. Cut to black. Hello everyone. Mason here. How you doing? Over the last few years, I've heard a lot of hype about TJ Klum, but I hadn't got around to giving him a chance. However, I recently took part in a book swap with Joe from BookBuds, and now I'm here to talk to you about The Lightning Struck Heart. The audiobook, written by TJ Klune and narrated by Michael Leslie, to be specific. When Justin, Prince of Verania, is kidnapped, Sam Havisford, the apprentice to the King's Wizard, must undertake a quest to save him. Joining Sam on the road are his two best friends, Gary, the hornless gay unicorn, and Tiggy, the half-giant who loves to smash things. The journey is complicated by the presence of Knight Commander Ryan Foxheart, aka Knight Delicious Face, the man that Sam is desperate to have, but can't. It's funny because Joe mentioned to me that he's heard some people say that Gary reminds them of Donkey from Shrek, which I think is a very apt comparison from an analytical standpoint because the lightning struck heart is very much a more than slightly satirical adult fairy tale. Now, I've got to be honest, I don't think this book will be for everyone because for starters, if you don't like sexual humour, you're out of luck because the lightning struck heart has that in spades. Sam is 20 years old, but he's an immature sassy motor mouth with a heart of gold and also a very horny boy. Then, of course, you've got Gary, who is an extremely sexually liberated gay unicorn. Needless to say, there are sexual references, puns and innuendos almost constantly. Humorously horny hijinks aside, I think this book has a very specific brand of humour and it's going to be one of those where it either clicks, you get it and find it at least a little bit funny, or it doesn't and you just find it very, very annoying. I can definitely see why some people might DNF this. Personally, I found it quite funny in places, but I definitely think I enjoyed it more as an author than I did as a member of the audience, if that makes sense. Obviously, I know nothing about TJ Gloom because this is the first of his books I've bothered to dive into, but one thing is for certain, The Lightning Struck Heart is saturated with style. It's got this super strong opening in which Sam and Gary are tied up because they've been captured by a dark wizard who's doing his very, very best to monologue at them, and they're having none of it. The fact that they flip back and forth between shit-talking the dark wizard and more or less ignoring him in favour of bickering with each other is pretty funny, but the fact that the dark wizard is drawn into their conversation, joins in with their banter and is eventually confused as to why he's even doing so, is even funnier. Whilst it's a fairly comical opening, it's also pretty engaging. TJ wastes no time getting in there with some world building and character development. It sets the tone for the rest of the book, introduces an element that drives the plot forward and initiates my favourite running joke. The dark wizards pop up occasionally throughout the rest of the book and each and every time, Sam's refusal to indulge them completely baffles him, and it's great. One of my favourite parts of this book is that TJ manages to craft all these characters that are so, so far beyond the realms of a reasonably believable person, and yet they're all so consistent and well defined. From beginning to end, no matter what the cast does, no matter how ridiculous the dialogue gets, and it does get ridiculous, it never ever feels inconsistent or out of character, and I love that. I don't know how he does it. This is one of those times, just like in Shrek, where the story gets right up in the beats and tropes of a classic fairy tale whilst deconstructing, poking fun at and delivering them in its own unique way. The plot itself is engaging, but it's also fairly incidental to be honest, it's really just there to provide opportunities for the characters to banter, which I'm fine with because I love a good dialogue heavy story. 
The dialogue is super dynamic and it flows really, really well. TJ masters the art of crafting more than one conversation happening at the same time. It sort of reminds me of those early Seth Rogen films, you know, like Knocked Up, Superbad, Pineapple Express, where the characters are just going back and forth and back and forth. There's multiple strands of a conversation happening simultaneously, but it never feels disconnected. It always ties up at the end and feels really satisfying. The pacing is another strong point. It just keeps moving from beat to beat to beat without faffing around. There's at least two sections of the plot that I can think of where the cast are travelling, but instead of turning this into a 50 hour epic and showing us every moment of that journey, TJ gives us what are essentially montages. It'll be like day 3, night 5, morning 13, and then we get these smash and grab snippets that offer brief snapshots into what's going on, which is usually some sort of ridiculous banter between the characters. It continues like that until the cast either reaches the next major plot development or their destination. Because of that, there's never a static moment or a pointless filler scene. Everything serves a purpose, drives the plot forward, and or illustrates a point. It works incredibly well and is executed pretty much flawlessly. In my opinion, this is a super strong example of when first person narration is executed pretty much perfectly. Everything is filtered through Sam's perspective, and since he's an unstoppable force of sarcasm and sass, every line drips with character. Sam is the most well-rounded character. Just like Shrek, he has layers. Despite being an immature, sassy bitch with an irreverent sense of humour, he's also a sweet, innocent, lovable, naive, optimistic, oblivious goofball. Yes, for the most part, this story is wall-to-wall -wall silly bollocks. It's one of those satirical settings where people do and say things that real people would never, ever, ever do or say, but it's also peppered with these moments of pure, unadulterated heart. Sam is grateful for the life he has. He wants to be a good man, a good wizard, a good friend, and he is. Regardless of the bickering, bantering and sniping back and forth, Sam loves the people in his life and despite his motor mouth, the things he does and the trouble he causes, they love him too. It's a great example of the found family trope and I really enjoyed it. Now, I can't stress this enough. All of the things I've mentioned so far are enhanced by Michael Leslie who does a bloody brilliant job of narrating the audiobook. He delivers an impressive variety of voices and not only are they all fairly distinct, he also manages to inject so much personality into them. Like I said before, the pros are filtered through Sam's perspective and Michael Leslie brings that perspective to life in high definition, baby. This is one of those times where the casting is perfect and the performance is completely natural. With the exception of one character in particular who has a pretty dodgy pseudo-Scottish accent, Leslie performs every moment of this book from the bonkers to the heartfelt with a skill that I, as a narrator, find very, very admirable. Alright, in the interests of fairness and balance, I say... Despite all the praise I've just heaped upon this book, like I said, I don't think it's going to be for everyone. If you're not into the sexual humour, you're going to tire of this pretty fast, and in my opinion, most of the characters are fairly one note. Sam develops, that's for sure, but really, nobody else does. They're introduced a certain way, and they pretty much stay that way throughout the entire story. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, because the one note they have is usually well defined and pretty entertaining, but if I was gonna continue with this series, I'd like to see a bit more character development for the supporting cast. Unfortunately, I do think this story only works if you like Sam, because he's an immature blabbermouth, which the prose reflects, and because of that, they can sometimes feel a bit rambly and meandering. 
if you go into this on the wrong day, it's going to be fucking unbearable. One of my main issues is that the romance is such a pivotal part of the plot, and yet, I wasn't invested in it at all. I know I'm about to severely disappoint at least a few people, but I found Ryan Foxheart, aka Night Delicious Face, fairly frustrating. I wasn't bothered about the whole will they, won't they aspect, because let's face it, we all know they will. And the fact that Ryan is engaged to the prince, but really wants Sam and can't stay away from him despite the fact that a dalliance between them could potentially end both of their lives was a little bit grating. To be honest, I don't think that's helped by the fact that, for starters, I'm not too keen on love interests who are slightly possessive despite the fact they're not actually willing to be with the protagonist, and secondly, I'm not really a dashing and immaculate knight commander kind of guy. Maybe if Ryan had been a grizzled gladiator or a gruff bounty hunter with a surly temperament or something cool like that, I might have been a bit more interested, but he's not and I wasn't. I like Sam, I really do, but he's just a bit too neurotic and immature for me. I saw him more as an annoying little brother. So, because I wasn't attracted to either of the men in this situation, any of the potential sexual tension was pretty much wasted on me. And because I wasn't too fond of Ryan as a person, I just wasn't that invested in what was supposed to be the emotional crux of the story. I still wanted things to work out for the best, though it's just a bit like when you're not too fond of your friend's romantic interest and you're like, why? But fine, okay, at least you're smiling. None of those observations were detrimental to my overall experience, though, and despite the fact I was satisfied enough that I'm not racing to dive into the next book in the series, I had a really good time with The Lightning Struck Heart. Oh, speaking of the title, I found the explanation behind it very satisfying. As an introduction to TJ Klune, I feel like it might have been a bit of a risky choice, just because the style and execution are so well defined and specific that if this particular niche hadn't worked for me, I might have been a bit turned off. That wasn't the case though. From the unique world building which is both comedic and completely consistent to the intriguing soft magic system and the sharp dialogue, TJ clearly knows what he's doing. Obviously, I have no idea what TJ's process is. He might be a proper planner and every piece of this plot might have been laid out before him, but to me, the lightning struck art screams of an author cutting loose and having fun. I can totally picture him giggling to himself as he writes it all down, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if most of this was improvised and written on the fly. Sometimes, occasionally, it might feel like he's trying a bit hard and hammering a joke, but I felt that way when I read Mort by Terry Pratchett, which I think is an apt comparison. Having said that, for the majority of the book, TJ executes what he's going for with a lot of skill and style, and I'm impressed. Last but not least, one of my favourite things about the Lightning Struck Art was TJ's approach to both LGBT and sex positive representation. I enjoy a good story that tackles themes of acceptance and identity, but it was actually really nice to listen to a book where queerness and freedom of identity is just a normalised thing. It's so casual, even the king makes a joke about how he'd sleep with Sam if he swung that way. From Gary's fabulous personality and his raunchy dynamic with another mythical creature, to Sam's fairy drag mother, the main plot revolving around a gay love triangle and one of the most accomplished wizards in the world being asexual, it just seems like everyone is allowed to be whoever they are, and I love that. In summary, this one gets a stiff, full mass thumbs up from me. <laughs> can't do it. Yeah, I highly recommend this one. Have you enjoyed this video? If so, there's lots of relevant buttons that'll help give this blind bastard a boost, and if you don't press at least one of them, you'll get rabies. Somehow. 
If you've got thoughts to share or fancy a chat, then you know where the comments section is, and you can find all the links to my social media in the description. Thanks ever so much for spending time with me today, guys. Until next time, take care. For now, I'm off, and you should have a good one.